Welcome to Eye on the Tigers News. I'm Kiara Webster. Thanks for being with us today for the news we've been watching for you. As the scope of a deadly Northern California wildfire set in, the sheriff said more than 450 people had now been assigned to comb through the chaired remains in search for more bodies. The blaze has killed at least 56 people, and authorities say 130 are unaccounted for. Many of the missing are elderly and from Megalia, a forested town of about 11,000 to north of Paradise. A week after the deadly campfire struck, police teams drive around Megalia searching for those still in their homes, checking if they need any food and water. Crews from Pacific Gas and Electric are also in the area. With a death toll at 56, it is the deadliest wildfire in a century. There were also three fatalities from separate blazes in Southern California. Republican Rep. Kevin McCarthy easily won an internal party election to take over the shrunken House GOP caucus, handing the seven-term Californian a familiar role of building the party back to a majority as well as protecting President Donald Trump's agenda. With Speaker Paul Ryan retiring and the House majority gone, the race for minority leader was McCarthy's to lose Wednesday but rarely has a leader of a party that suffered a major defeat. Democrats wiped out Republicans and GOP held suburban districts from New York to McCarthy's own backyard, been so handily rewarded. Nancy Pelosi is expected to be elected House Speaker by the new Democratic majority next week. Saudi Arabia's top prosecutor announced Thursday he's recommended the death penalty for five suspects charged with ordering and carrying out the killing of Saudi writer Jamal Khashoggi at the Kingdom's Consulate in Istanbul. The announcement by the Kingdom's top prosecutor, Saad Alamojib, appears aimed at distancing the killers and their operation from Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, whose decision-making powers have placed in the center of global outcry over the killing. The announcement was published in a statement carried by the state-run Saudi press agency. The brutal death of Khashoggi, a Washington Post columnist who had been critical of the crown prince, has shocked the world and led many analysts and officials to believe it could not have been carried out without the prince's knowledge. The first hearing in CNN and Jim Acosta's federal lawsuit against President Trump and several top White House aides ended with the judge saying that he would rule on Thursday. CNN and Acosta are alleging that the White House's suspension of his press pass violates the First and Fifth Amendments. Their lawyers are asking for a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction that would restore his pass right away. They also want the administration's action deemed unconstitutional. CNN and Acosta filed suit on Tuesday. The case was assigned to Judge Timothy J. Kelly, a Trump appointee. Testing by AAA shows that electronic driver assist systems on the road today may not keep vehicles in their lanes or spa stationary objects in time to avoid a crash. The tests brought a warning from the auto club that drivers shouldn't think that their systems make their vehicles self-driving and that they should always be ready to take control. AAA also said that use of the word pilot by automakers in naming their systems can make some owners believe the vehicles can drive themselves. Much of the area is under a winter storm warning beginning later tonight. How much snow will we get? Here's Joe Lee with the forecast. <laughs> We started the day off with the coldest morning of the school year with temperatures in the upper teens. We won't rebound much, as highs will be close to the freezing point this afternoon, and that means we'll be cold enough for all snow. That snow is the result of a coastal system moving up to our east and bringing with it a lot of moisture. Snow should begin late this afternoon and continue into Thursday night and last overnight. Snowfall amounts should reach 6 inches, but as much as 8 inches is not out of the question. Snow showers persist Friday morning with a change over to rain as temperatures move toward 40. Some more wet weather expected Friday night and then again on Saturday. 
Right now, it looks like we dry out for Sunday, but we remain cold. That's the forecast. I'm Jolie. Have a great day. Syracuse basketball renews an old rivalry tonight. Here's Joe with sports. The Syracuse Orange will meet former Big East rival Connecticut at Madison Square Garden on Thursday night. The game part of the 2K Empire Classic doubleheader. The second game features Oregon versus Iowa. The SU UConn game will start at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. Syracuse is 2-0 and ranked number 15 in this week's Associated Press poll. Connecticut is also 2-0, and this will be the fourth meeting between Syracuse and Connecticut since both schools left the Big East following the 2012-13 season. Syracuse beat UConn in the semifinals of the Battle for Atlantis tournament in 2015-16, two years ago. Connecticut knocked off Syracuse at Madison Square Garden, and last year Syracuse beat the Huskies 72-63 in the Jimmy V Classic at the Garden. Tip time is 7 o'clock and is on ESPN2. SU fans will hang around for Game 2 of the 2K Classic, and the Orange will play Friday night. But the big game is in Yankee Stadium on Saturday when undefeated and third-ranked Notre Dame face off against the 7-2 Orange. Kickoff is 2.30 and will be nationally televised on NBC. With the start of New York's most popular big game season just days away, the State Department of Envi Environmental Conservation is encouraging hunters to be safe, have fun, and enjoy the environment, and consider passing up on shot of young bucks. Mm -hmm. The regular firearms mm -hmm. seasons for deer and bear for the southern zone begin Saturday, November 17th. The 2018 regular deer and bear hunting seasons in New York's southern zone begin at sunrise on Saturday, November 17th, and continue through December 9th. That's it in sports. I'm Joe. Have a the Friends of Rachel Club is collecting donations for the Oswego City Animal Shelter. We would greatly appreciate any donations of old towels, blankets, pet toys, and pet food. This collection goes until tomorrow, Friday, November 16th. Bring your donation to the bin in the main foyer. Are you interested in donating blood? There is a blood drive on Tuesday, November 20th in the high school gymnasium from 8.30 to 2.30 if you are interested in signing up. Please find a National Honor Society member during your lunch or see Mr. Deckman in room 103. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kiara. Have a great day.